So if you are a sales expert and looking to skyrocket your success through effective networking, you have come to the right place. I'm your host Kadambari and in this webinar, uh, we'll explore the secrets and strategies to improve your networking and boost your sales like never before. So before we deep dive into today's webinar, let's have a quick sneak peek of two of our biggest strengths, HCRM and 12 Grids. So HCRM is powerful customer success uh, relationship management solution that helps you optimize and uh, streamline your interactions with the customers, enhance customer satisfaction, and ultimately drive revenue growth. Why 12 Grids is an exceptional web design agency that specializes in UX-driven websites, SEO, content marketing services to deliver guaranteed results for your brand. Okay, now let's get back to the webinar. So networking is the lifeblood of sales. It's not just about exchanging uh, business cards. It's about building genuine relationships that last a lifetime. And who better than Biman Gandhi to explain us the importance of networking? Biman Gandhi, sir, is one of the leading business and executive coaches from India. With over 30 years of experience working with leading Indian companies and fortunate 100 multinationals, he assists startup entrepreneurs in evaluating their business ideas, examining potential uh, market, conducting sustainability studies, uh, performing SWOT analysis, developing a business plan and financial projection, and assisting in creating funding proposals. Now that's a lot of things, right? So welcome, Mr. Gandhi, sir. I hope you are ready with some secret tips and tricks that will certainly help all our friends in networking and become a maestro. So let's begin with our webinar then. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Kadambri, for uh, giving a wonderful introduction. Uh, that really means a lot to, lot to me. And I also take this opportunity to welcome all the participants. I can see there are about 21 in total, including me. Uh, this is also a kind of networking, isn't it? Uh, let's try to make you know these webinar a little bit more interactive. Uh, if you uh, if you don't want to unmute yourself or if there are short answers, you can always uh, type into the chat box. Uh, networking is something that I got introduced not very long ago. Um, many uh, uh, in in fact, you know, I in out of my thirty years of uh, professional career. 22 years is something that I have spent in corporate life. And uh, when you are working in a corporate, like many of you might be doing or may have done in past, you know that your circle is very, very limited. You know, very limited number of people. All your friends are from the same company. Uh, maybe uh, there are a few friends uh, either on the supplier or, or on the customer side. But uh, the point is, the central point is your circle is very, very limited. You don't get to meet uh, too many people or the people from different walks of life. And that is something that I feel, which is unfortunate uh, specifically for the people who are in corporate life. But even uh, I nowadays I'm seeing that a lot of people in the corporate life also, they, they step out, they make a genuine effort uh, to enhance their knowledge, to probably know a little bit more about uh, other people, the other industries and they become part of different, different forums. And we'll talk about those different forums uh, later on. But uh, like I said, out of 30 years, uh, 22 years, which I spent in corporate and eight years back, when I started or when I decided to do something on my own, believe me, there were only 50 people who knew me in this city. I'm living in Pune for uh, about 20 years, 20 plus years now, but, when I started uh, to position myself as a business coach and an, and an executive coach, uh, within a month, I, I realized, so it was a very quick realization for me that there are not more than 50 people who know me in this city. Uh, and out of those 50 people, five of them were my family members and the rest of the 45 people or 50 odd people were from my friend circle and uh, the neighbors. Now, somebody who is just beginning a completely new profile and starting to be on their own, uh, obviously, it's going to be a lot of challenge, isn't it? And that's where I looked at networking. And I joined uh, 
a couple of networks to begin with. One of them was a business club. And that's where I started learning the importance of networking. What networking did in my case, uh, when I joined it somewhere in 2016, uh, it helped me to gain a lot of visibility. I could reach out. At least now, I can proudly say that in, in this city, there are at least 500 people who know that there is somebody called Beeman Gandhi and uh, he's into business coaching and executive coaching. So that's the power of networking. And that came to me uh, with a very limited expense. You know, I didn't really spend a lo hell lot of money, uh, but I think I was, uh, I was fortunate uh, to be part of the right network, number one. And the second thing that I try to make the maximum out of networking. And that is what, what I have learned out of my experience. And uh, that is what I have you know, tried to make the agenda of today's meeting. Okay, so let's begin with it. I'll just move the screen because uh, I have already faced a couple of technical challenges. So I just want a confirmation from some of you if it is moving. So here is a bit of my introduction. Uh, like I said, I'm a business and executive coach in my current role. I also take up some management consulting uh, activities. I'm also a speaker and I also uh, provide training which are limited to certain business uh, related topics. I run two organizations. Uh, one, both of them are proprietary organization. One of them is uh, by the name of Nilman Consultants and another one is the Business Wise. All right. Uh, Rajendra sir, can you confirm if uh, my screen is visible? Still visible and it's moving, right? Yes, it is. All right. Okay. So let's dive into the networking. Uh, before we get into the types of network and understand uh, what works in network and what doesn't, uh, let me just show you some statistics. And these statistics I have collected uh, from, from the known sources. One of them was really an eye-opening. Just give me a second. Uh, I think I need to adjust a little bit on my screen here. All right, so one of them is uh, related to how it impacts your business. So HubSpot did this uh, survey and they figured out that the businesses are likely to grow four times when they are referred by someone who they know. Now, how do they, how do they come to this point, someone they know? Obviously, it is coming from network. So what they established is that referrals which are generated from networking, any kind of platform, uh, there are online and there are offline and there are hybrid versions also of uh, network. But if the referrals are generated from networking, it has a potential to grow business four times. The second fact is the formalized networking program experience twice the revenue growth. Now, what do we mean by formalized networking program? For example, Age CRM is organizing these kind of events every now and then. If I'm not mistaken, every month they have one or the other meetings uh, or these kind of webinars which are going on. So that's a formalized adopted model of networking. It's not only about uh, gathering some people, like-minded people and uh, sharing some knowledge here. Of course, that happens. So knowledge sharing, I would say, is a byproduct. But uh, what happens in this kind of formalized networking program is the new connections that you make. You come to know about each other uh, a bit more. Of course, I, I don't know whether we'll have some time to really network virtually with each other at the end of this program or not. But at least we'll come to know that, okay, there were some people uh, who participated in this program and that person could be uh, of my interest because he attended the same program and uh, I had the same interest that they had. So this is something that you can make out and probably you can just pick up the names if there is no networking time available at the end of the meeting. Uh, I'm sure there is going to be some question answer session. So in that also you can pick up the like-minded people. But at least if you can pick up the name, you can try to connect with them on other social media platforms, and especially the LinkedIn. <clears throat> so this survey uh, about formalized networking program was conducted by Deloitte. Then there was this 
uh, survey which was conducted or study rather which was uh, taken up by Harvard Business Review and you know how authentic they are. So according to them, the closing rate is 40% more when the lead is received from networking platform. Now, this is a startling number, 40% hike in the closing rate. I think it will please everybody who's attending this meeting and especially the people who are in sales. So that's what the importance of uh, networking is. LinkedIn did, did this survey and they figured out, now this is slightly on a negative side, but there is still a takeaway from this. What they revealed is that sales executives have admitted that they lost 28% of business when they stopped networking. That means the people who were doing business through networking or at least attending networking and uh, one stream of their business was from, uh, from networking platform, any kind of networking platform, when they stopped doing that, and it happens many a times, people join some network, uh, they they become member of some platform, and over a period of time, the situation changes. Maybe the location changes, maybe there is some problem with the platform itself, because of which they stop uh, networking. Whatever could be the reason, we have not gone. We are not going into the reasons why people stop going to the networking. But what is revealed here is that there was a dip of about 28% in their business when they stopped going to this networking. So this is something that I thought uh, uh, will be very, very important statistics to begin and set the stone of our discussion. Uh, you can feel free to stop me anytime, uh, interrupt me. You don't have to wait till the very end uh, to ask the questions. We are going to uh, speak about, uh, I think there are not many slides, about eight to nine slides. And we should be able to cover uh, the entire lot in about 45 minutes to 50 minutes. But feel free to question, uh, point your queries in the middle. All right. Now let's look at the types of network. Now this should be a very quick one because most of us are quite aware uh, what kind of networks which are available. Um, one of the type of network is industry specific. So there are different, different sectors. There are uh, technology sectors. Let's say there are pharma sector. There are some chemical manufacturers, people who are dealing with metal, machining, all different kind of people. They have their own forum. Uh, and and I'm, I've just put up some names here like Technology Connect or Health Summit or Automation Summit. There could be something related to the people who are into electrical business. There are people who are into IT. Probably they have their own forums. In city of Pune, where I live, uh, I see that there are at least four to five forums which are only dedicated to IT. There is one uh, uh, forum which is called as Computers and Media Dealers Association. And uh, the strength of that group is uh, pretty high. I think almost every single person who is into IT or IT-connected business uh, they are probably the, the member of this, uh, this forum. Then there are <clears throat> certain online forums, LinkedIn. There are uh, uh, forums like uh, uh, Reddit, for example, where there are you know, discussions which are happening. And on those discussion threads also, you find some knowledgeable people. There are some people who can add some value to you or there are some people who can also end up giving some business to you. So there are some online forums as well. There are some general or business oriented uh, platforms. Uh, I'm sure in Mumbai, those who have logged in from Mumbai are familiar with Mumbai Management Association. In Pune, we have something called as Pune Management Association. Those who have joined from Gujarat probably are aware that there is a, there is a management association called AMA, Ahmedabad Management Association. Now, these are domain agnostic. They are not connected to any specific industry. They are, of course, post-corona, most of the forum or a lot of forum have actually started practicing in hybrid mode. So there are online and offline forums also. Chamber of Commerce is mostly present in most of the big cities. Uh, in Pune, we have this Maratha Chamber of Commerce and in Bombay also there is a Chamber of Commerce. There are certain uh, country-specific forums which are specifically looking, in, looking after the, the commercial, commerce aspect, commerce and the business aspect of it. And they provide a lot of 
guidance. They provide a lot of uh, policy support. They are also the ones who are very, very influential when it comes to government policies. So they also do a representation on behalf of a specific uh, business or a business sector. So those are the forums where, again, you can find your interest. Uh, there are certain local communities. Um, uh, nowadays, I think it is uh, mushrooming a lot. When I say community forums, there are some caste-based. In India, you know, there are a lot of uh, different castes. Uh, I, can, I can definitely talk about, again, in Pune, we have something called as BBN. So it is a Brahmin business network. Then there are some uh, Marwadis who are very good at uh, different, different businesses. So they have their Maheshwari uh, platform. Uh, one of the one of the cast in Marwadis is Maheshwari. So they have created their own forum. So uh, keeping aside those community or caste based uh, forums, there are different uh, different business forums also. Uh, there are a lot of uh, entrepreneur groups under different different names. Uh, there is something called as just for entrepreneurs, J four E they call it. Then I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the, the business clubs like. Uh, BNI. BNI is one of the largest uh, business networking uh, platform. Uh, it, of course, is licensed by uh, by the US, but in India, in all major cities, they have minimum 20 to 30 different uh, uh, chapters. They call it chapters. Uh, it is based on the location. So those kind of forums are also there. Uh, apart from that, uh, again, in regions, you may have uh, depending on from where you have logged in. But again, I if I can speak about Pune one more time, in Pune or rather in Maharashtra, there is something called a Saturday club. That is also another business club. And uh, when I talked about, uh, uh, about my story, when I joined uh, the network, my very first network was Saturday club. It's a business referral platform where people from different uh, types of businesses, either individuals or people who are running their small little companies, they come and they know each other. There is a structured meeting which takes place. And under that structured meeting, they also try to be helpful to each other by passing the referrals. So that is also something that uh, is very, very useful. And I found it very useful when I joined it. And apart from the typical networks where a fixed set of people come and meet with each other or try to uh, collaborate with each other, there are certain events which are happening. So that also I consider as uh, the networking possibility, a possibility where uh, uh, you can uh, uh, you can exchange ideas, you can uh, understand different products, probably you can source uh, the kind of material or input that you need for your business. If you are looking for a specific product or a specific service, that is also available from these different kinds of events. So that is possible in the exhibitions or expos, as we call it. Just yesterday, I, our prime minister has opened up uh, Bharat Mandapam. I'm sure uh, many of you might have seen that over the TV. And Bharat Mandapam is also going to be a platform where uh, uh, the exchange is going to happen at an international level. It's an international convention center. And apart from that, of course, we talked about this webinar that we all are attending today. Webinars are also a great platform for people to come together and collaborate. So these are various opportunities, various types of networks which are available. And definitely you can make use of it. Moving on. <clears throat> on these four different categories of uh, platforms or forums or networks, whatever you want to call it. Let's try to figure out what exactly happens there. In industry-specific uh, forums, general and business forums, online and events, here is what happens. So in industry-specific uh, forums, uh, people talk about different, different industry challenges. If it is uh, uh, dedicated to a particular industry, obviously they'll be talking about their sectors. They will talk about uh, the issues which that particular uh, industry is facing. Then, of course, uh, a part of it is also spent on discussing the emerging trends or new behaviors which uh, 
is happening uh, and uh, that is not just limited to regional changes or the local changes but what is happening at a country level or at an international level those kind of things are also being discussed especially again talking about this it forum i see a lot of murmur going on uh, on this uh, ai tools because that's actually which has actually started changing the landscape in many ways and it has started affecting uh, a lot of business both in positive and also negative connotation so these are the things that people take up as a discussion and then of course based on what is being discussed people derive their own takeaways and then accordingly they change their strategy now this is also something that one can really take up now you might think that uh, most of you i am assuming that you are carrying a sales profile so you might think that uh, what do we have to do about it uh, if people are discussing about their challenges or their uh, or the emerging trends and things like that i am here to sell my product or service what am i supposed to do but then uh, sales is not only about selling right it's it's also about understanding how the market behaves how are you going to get this information if you are member of any of these networking platform and if you are attending them regularly and also deriving the information the way you want i think it can add a lot in terms of your strategy it can actually help you to make some mid course correction uh, for example if you have taken up some uh, a specific objective or a goal in your business but then because of the challenges that you are that are being discussed or you become aware of it uh, or the trends that you become aware of probably you can say, make some mid course correction in your plan plan of action so that is also something that you need to take care of it uh people also exchange ideas and of course they look for business opportunities now because it's a business opportunity obviously it should be of a great interest to anybody who's into sales profile in general or business uh, kind of platform like uh, i mentioned about uh, pune management association or there are certain uh, discipline specific uh, associations also uh, for example there is something called as uh, international society of automation now again that also has a presence uh, uh, globally as well as in pan india there are lots of cities where they have their own chapters Uh, there are certain engineering associations and like i mentioned maybe there are some uh, healthcare associations so these are all general or business platforms where obviously they are going to focus more on their common interests uh, again they will talk about the new technologies or the technologies which are getting obsolete they will talk about their specific needs so they exchange information around what exactly do they need these this kind of platform also becomes a, a a forum where people can promote themselves so it's a great opportunity for people to showcase uh, what they are capable of uh, even you know this is also true for individuals uh, and uh, here i would like to share one little story uh, i became a member of pune management association about 4 years back and uh, during corona time Uh, obviously we were all locked up uh, there was a lockdown there were movement movements were restricted or almo almost uh, you know we were all uh, kind of caged or prisoned in our own houses so we decided that uh, let's uh, attempt these online uh, meetings because people had lot of time and there was also an excitement about online meeting to begin with initially so we Uh, quickly turned around with uh, several programs and uh, out of those several programs i did about four to five different programs on variety of topics and when i got opportunity to and one of the program was related to sales uh, the other was related to i think uh, goal setting and uh, how do you achieve your targets without uh, losing the way and there were a couple of other topics i think negotiation was another one out of those four topics i don't remember uh, which was the exact program but that program was attended by one of the hr heads of a very large company in pune and i can share the name of the company also it's kalyani techno forge uh, a very large group very very uh, reputed group uh, of course a uh, you know sister concern of bharat forge and bharat forge i'm sure everybody knows so it was attended by one of the hr heads out there and somehow he liked my delivery he liked the content and he was tempted to contact me 
uh eventually he ended up getting my number from somewhere and uh, he contacted me he asked for a meeting i went there for a meeting when the lockdown was over <clears throat> and immediately i got an assignment to coach their executives and i ended up uh, for about two and a half years i was coaching various executives right from the presidents to uh, to the director and some of the functional heads and i really enjoyed uh, that uh, you know that assignment because i got to work with completely a different industry with large number of people very very senior highly experienced executives uh, and uh, the entire experience was great but if you keep the experience and interest part aside at the end of the day it generated a business for me how did it just happen it just happened because i was providing some kind of value through a platform and we call it a network i and in in that platform we are not allowed to do a direct promotion so even though i did not do a promotion or i did not share even my contact numbers there uh, i was still able to attract the interest of somebody who was looking for my kind of services and that's how he ended up contacting me and if i take this uh, this story little further uh, not not very long but one of the guys whom i had coached in that organization he ended up resigning and he went to some other company which was even bigger than kalyani technoforge and now he has hired me in his company uh, for the similar activity so one dot connects to another and to another and another and that's how your opportunities get expanded so this is something that if you are uh, you know willing to do if you are actively participating in this kind of networks it can really take you to to very very far moving forward online platforms people generally on online because there is a lack of attention span and there is no real relation which actually builds up so there are people who are posting their temporary issues and specifically if something is broken or something is not working something is bothering them or, or they are facing some trouble they will post those issues and you will see these kind of issues getting posted on microsoft network or Uh, adobe network or there are lot many different different forums where you will see that people are saying that oh i'm getting this error and this and that and then of course there are knowledgeable people who have solved this problem are posting their views or they are guiding them but that also becomes an opportunity because once you help people once you start uh, getting in touch with them obviously people are going to perceive uh your value in different different ways okay <clears throat> then uh they also share updates they also make announcements of different different things and finally what happens in uh, in the events events like exhibitions expos webinars are the opportunities to showcase who you are what your products are what benefits are you delivering uh what is a new proposition that you have because normally when you go to exhibition uh, and i'm not talking about uh, the exhibitions which are taking place in uh, in the fmcg sector because it's just an opportunity for people to to sell the same stuff uh, and there is no innovation but i'm talking about uh, the real serious industrial expos where people bring up uh, their new products they are they are keen to share about the the new inventions or uh, the innovations that they have done so these are the opportunities where people are able to push their products obviously in exhibitions you will see some attractive schemes again promotion happens there as well and participating in exhibition in other word also means that you also get an opportunity to customers because exhibitions are always <clears throat> the primary target is to get the new customers and not necessarily the the to impress upon the old customers okay so these are the activities which happen here now the most important part so far everything that i have i have said on the networking part hello is anybody anybody trying to ask me a question no okay so everything that i have displayed so far on this slide and i have said about the network i'm sure a, all of you knew about it i have just you know try to present it in a beautiful way uh, trying to segregate uh, according to the different types of uh, platforms 
But the most important part is here. And that part is why do people go to network? You go to network to make new connection. You go to network to build relationship, either cementing the old relationship or uh, building the new relationship or, sorry, or generate leads or you go there to gain visibility. Now, if these are the things, do you all agree? First of all, let me ask you this question that this is precisely what you expect when you go to any sort of networking event. If your answer is, is yes, then tell me what it is. What, what are these four points? Making new connections, building relationship, generating leads and gain visibility. Oh, I need to go to chat. I think people are responding there on the chat. Just give me a second. These are your networking goals. Okay, I revealed the answer. In the process of going to my chat, I think I click the, yeah. Yes, gain visibility, yeah. Connection and generating leads, correct. All four, yeah. Yeah, but those are typically your goals. If you have, if you have one goal, that's also fine. If you have more than one goal and all four as your goals, I can't think of any other goal when you go to network. Either you are building a new relationship, you are or cementing the old relationship, or you are making just making a new connection. Uh, maybe not for your near future, but maybe for your midterm or long term future, or you are gaining the visibility, or you also have an objective of generating the leads. Uh, can you think of any other uh, goals when you go to network? I'll wait for about 10 seconds. If you can think of any other goals. And it's quite possible. You don't have to go by only what I say. Okay. Okay. If so, okay. Thank you, Mansi. So if those are your goals, I give them the weightage of, uh, no, e equal weightage. But if those are your goals, my question to you is, are you doing these for your networking goals? What are you doing? If these are your goals, obviously you must be taking some actions, right? So my question is, what are you doing about your networking goals? Now here you are reading a question which is saying, are you doing this? So obviously I'm going to reveal the answers, but prior to me revealing the answer, I want to ask you, what is it that you are doing? Marketing is what uh, Srinija is saying. Gather and share information may be related, latest update, market awareness. Okay. All right. So. First of all, you need to understand, are you are your goals smart? Whether it is related to generating leads, whether it is related to gaining some kind of visibility or talking about relationship or new connections, making new connections, are you converting them into smart category? So whether they are measurable, whether they are real, realistic and whether you are also at least, you know, if not entire, uh, full form of smart, but at least it should be measurable, it should be realistic and also the time bound. So this is the question that you should ask if you are going for any networking meet, are you meeting these goals or are you converting them into smart? Then another question that you need to ask to yourself is, are you really preparing for those goals? So if I happen to go right after this meeting, by the way, I'm going to attend one more uh, meeting. There is a user meet of one of the one of the products. 
uh, and uh, they have come to Pune uh, today and they are uh, they have arranged a user meet and that is starting somewhere around uh, 6 6 30 so i'll be attending that meet again but when i'm when i've decided to go and attend that meeting obviously i'm going to spend at least a couple of hours there if i am going blank and just you know with a thought probably we'll have exchange of cards and maybe if, if I find somebody interested, maybe I'll uh, you know sit with him in a quiet corner and and maybe I'll pitch for my services or maybe I would like to know more about them. But this is all you know kind of assumptions. So instead of assuming things, if you know what kind of network you are going to attend, of course it might happen that in these kind of user meet, Probably you, everybody you are going to meet, more of more or less, all of them are strangers to you. Even that's also fine. But are you really preparing for one of these goals? At least you are trying to be more visible. You, how are you going to be more standout compared to other people? So at least you are able to create some kind of interest among those people when you are attending those meetings. The next thing, do you target a specific audience? Just because we are we have just gained some little bit of knowledge about networking, it shouldn't happen that uh, you know we'll just go without any target in mind and we'll just see who whom we are going to meet and then finally take a call. No, I think when you are going to a network, target a specific audience. When I say specific audience, obviously it should be in line with your business deliverables either your product or service or solution, whatever you are into, try to figure out who could be my target and specific audience. I'm not saying that you don't talk to other people or don't try, try to strike a conversation with other people. Of course, that will be very, very unpolite. Don't do that. But at least make sure that you get quality 10 minutes, 5 minutes time with the people whom you think your is your specific target audience. Unless and until you are doing that, if you are not bringing that focus while you are you are into middle of a networking session, probably you are not doing justice to the time and energy and the other resources that you are spending on network. And finally, do you do adequate follow-up? Now, this is something that I have realized out of, uh, let's say, personal experience. I, I happen to be part of a couple of exhibitions on behalf of my customer. So they had put up a stall in an exhibition. Um, their stall actually won the, the, the best designed stall in the entire exhibition where almost 350 people had participated. So they did a very good job in terms of designing the entire stall. There was a great footfall, uh, more than what we had actually expected. They had also kept some scheme because they were actually launching completely a new business model. And through this, that, that business model, they were uh, obviously offering some very unique services for which everybody would like would be interested. And that was an industry-specific uh, exhibition. So obviously, the participants who came and attended uh, that exhibition were also from the same field. So they basically understood what they are offering and they were all very, very pleased. They had kept one offer to attract uh, the people. Uh, I think they were offering about uh, rupees 2000 worth of services absolutely free on their first order. So even if the order value is, let's say, 3000 rupees, they were willing to uh, give a discount of 2000 rupees, regardless of the value. So even if it is 3000, they will give you a discount of 2000 in that. So it was very, very attractive. We collected a lot of cards. A lot of people actually spend a good amount of time discussing with the technical executives because the stall, of course, had you know four, about four to five people uh, who were assisting different different people coming at different times. So overall, all in all, the response was great. But after the exhibition was over, two months now, or two two years, sorry, two years, I. I don't see anything happening with regards to that particular model. Yeah, three or four people were actually aligned. They are from the same city, so they didn't mind visiting. So they did uh, some follow-up meetings. But with the rest of the 2,000 odd people, 
there was nobody who actually did the follow up with them and this is a crime this is a crime in the sense that you have spent so much of money in designing the entire stall uh, leave aside the participation fee you spent two full days with your entire team so that's also a cost uh, they also spent a lot of money on creating the relevant videos uh, they also printed uh, some beautiful brochures so if you put all of that cost together i think they spent close to 12 lakh rupees and at the end of the day what they got was peanuts and that was purely because people did not do adequate follow up when you don't follow up and that's an important part of networking whenever you meet even if you it was a casual conversation and if there was a bit of commitment that okay i'll get in touch with you two days later two weeks later i'm traveling to delhi i'm going this way that way whatever and when people have uh, sort of promised to each other that okay we'll we'll get in touch with each other and if you don't do that then you are you are the culprit so networking is not only about just going there grabbing some uh, visiting cards and uh, attracting some interest or making some pitch or presentation it's also about follow up so this is something which is very very important <clears throat> now before you get into any kind of network uh, again this is based on my personal experience so please know that there are few things that you need to keep in mind so before you join any network try to understand the reputation and the credibility of a network the the quality of uh, people whom you are going to going to meet there the overall reputation of the network itself there are like i said nowadays lot of networking platforms which are created even in whatsapp also you i'm sure many of you are part of different different groups uh for someone like me you know there is a forum called learning and development i am part of it but i see nothing happening there many a times i feel like i should just step out of this because uh, every now and then after every week you know i have to clear that chat because i am not even able to spend time on reading all the messages but okay there are there were couple of you know very interesting inquiries which were there but uh at the end of the day it's not really producing the kind of results that i am looking for so we should be very very cognizant about joining any network because joining a network is not only about uh just being present there and just for the name sake that okay you are part of this forum or that uh, network or this community it's all about how qualitatively you are engaging with people even the quality of people is also very very important you will find that there are some people who are at a different level again i am not comparing uh, uh the people directly but there is always a there is there is always a different phase of the business there are some people who are at the startup level let's take that example and then there are people who are already into same business for nearly 10 years or 12 years they are well established now their requirements their challenges uh what they are looking for is completely at a different level than what startup is looking for so there is no direct match so try to look at uh, when you are joining the network try to look at what kind of members do they have and of course the quality of people you know their maturity level now this is something that of course uh, when you express a desire to be part of any network probably you are not aware because you don't know anybody there it is quite possible but in that case you should rely on uh, on the feedback from the past and current members or get some testimonials or maybe some information from which you can gather the impression or make your own impression about that network also try to look at the effectiveness of, effectiveness of network i have seen networks where people have come together they have built a community it has been going on quite well but over a period of time because of the the uh, the diverse nature of the members the network is now going into completely a different direction no meaningful useful discussions are happening there is no uh, uh, serious business discussions which are happening and at the end of the day they have lost the effectiveness so you should also look at whether this network is still very very effective and it can be useful to you 
and then of course look at the benefits and the opportunity part of it what it can offer to you and whether it is really the right network to join or not in terms of criteria and commitment you should be uh, aware about the eligibility and normally this is also done by the people who are running the network so at least know that you are eligible uh, also understand your time commitment many a times people think that okay i have joined this network and uh, okay it's just you know a couple of hours in a month or once in a fortnight uh, but then once they join it they come to know that oh now this network also demands some additional time for example typically for business clubs uh, and i have been part of uh, a business club so i can tell you that that my business club used to meet only once in a fortnight so and it used to meet about couple of hours or at the max three hours including the breakfast on every fortnight so those who are joining it new probably they'll think okay it's about five to six hours every month and i can do it's doable but later on after joining the network you realize that the network also expects you to do one on one meeting or one to one meeting with the fellow members so that you know each other very well and that is outside the meeting time sometimes you do one on one uh, while having the breakfast post the meeting but most of the time it is not possible so you end up going to somebody's office or inviting someone else to your office and that consumes time now this is all good for the business i am not saying it's wrong but you should be cognizant that okay it is not just about the the meeting time it's also about the the time which is required post the networking meeting then there are certain events which are happening uh, of course some of them are mandatory to attend and some of them are not so compulsory but those mandatory meetings also if you have not factored into then you will suddenly realize that oh i can't really give so much time out of my business i just joined this network to get some referrals but i was not aware about my time commitment so be wary about your time commitment there are some business clubs which are very very particular about uh, the attendance you cannot miss the meeting for more than 3 times in a year or in 6 months time whatever is the duration but they have certain uh, disciplinary rules and if you miss those meetings uh, your membership may not be renewed again okay for that particular term which is 6 months for which you have already paid money in advance probably they will not touch you but your membership will be at risk if you are not disciplined enough so this is also something which you need to be very very uh, cognizant about uh, code of ethics i have no example of any network where they have violated the general the morality issues but i have heard about few things where the networks are not really functioning well where there are you know immorality which is happening and then there are people who are unnecessarily uh disturbing the whole motto or the purpose of the network so you should be very again you know when you go through the testimonials or get, get on to the feedback from past or current members you will come to know about those but i think this is also a sanity check that you must do before you join the network and then of course uh what matters the most is the cost right so uh, the membership requirement their fees other than membership fees if there are any other expectations many a times again you know in bni they charge you uh separately for different different trainings and some of those trainings are very very mandatory so it's not just about the the membership fee that you pay pay one time membership and then some recurring expenses that you pay but you also end up paying some other costs so be aware about that also and also not to forget you should also be cognizant about what kind of returns you can expect now this is only a matter of guess you can only predict because nobody is going to give you any commitment but you should have a fair idea that okay if i'm paying 1 lakh rupees a year uh, to a particular network then this is something that i'm going to get in return not necessarily always in monetary front maybe there are certain other areas through which you can benefit so try to uh, also understand the return on investment okay now few other things that you should be aware about networking that in networking obviously when you go you are going to meet with people and let's 
you know, limit this this particular segment for a physical networking where you are going to meet with people on face to face. So, of course, uh, in network, everybody wants to talk. But there are three categories of people. There are some people who are hesitant to start. You could also be one of them. Then there are some people who do not start at all. And then there are some people who are unstoppable. So all three different categories. Uh, and I'm, I'm just putting this slide only for you to know that in network, and especially the people who are first timers when it comes to networking, it's very important to know that everybody is there to talk because that's, I mean, there is a common purpose. There is a, there is a common objective for everyone to come together and be part of network because they want to, to talk about themselves, to talk about their product, to talk about their services. But these are certain issues. Like so there are some people who are hesitant to start. If you think you are a quite extrovert person, then you should grab hold of those people who are hesitant to start. You never know, uh, you know what's lying in the store. Probably somebody who is hesitant to start actually is a gold mine. It can prove to be a gold mine for you. And then there are some people who do not start at all. Uh, probably because they already have made their own circle among few of the members and they just want to network with them and they are not interested in any new member or anybody else because they have kind of concluded. My recommendation here would be to stay away from that to begin with. Okay, I'm not saying that you never talk to them, but I'm saying don't really waste your energy initially with those people. And the people who are unstoppable, there also you should try to make a connection because they are the ones who are Typically, the people who are, you know, chatters or, or uh, talkers, as we call it, they are the ones who reveal a lot of information. One more thing that uh, when since we are on this topic of everyone wants to talk, one of the things that you should also keep in mind that everybody wants to talk and everybody wants to talk about themselves. Now, if everyone in the network is going to talk about themselves, then who is going to listen to whom, right? Uh, it, it becomes like uh, Arnav Goswami's debate, uh, the, the prime time debate where, you know, in, in televisions you see not a single politician wants to hear the, the counterpart. But the good networker is the one who allows other person to talk. And if you are talking with them and also practicing active listening, we are going to talk about that also. If you are also practicing active listening and also ask them some gentle questions, you will be able to know more and more and more and more about them. At least at one point of time, he's going to stop and will be ready to lend his ear to you. So just make sure that you allow people to talk. If you know, if, if they are falling in any of this category, especially the people who are unstoppable. Next, the another thing that you should know that it's not always about selling. When you go to network, of course, your prime objective is to one of those goals. Either you want to make new connection, you want to generate leads, you want to improve your visibility, or you want to build a relationship or forge a stronger relationship. Everything, of course, the end objective is selling. But networking is not always about selling. You keep it slightly at the back end. You, or they, as they call it, you keep it on the back burner. So what you should be doing is, in networking, when you go there, try to share. Share from your knowledge base. What is it that you can offer to, to people? Networking is also about learning. When other people are talking, when they are talking about their stuff, about maybe let's say about their challenges, maybe they will end up sharing something which they are practicing and could be very well be useful to you in your business or the way you are doing your stuff, whichever is your profile. So try to learn from others because that's also one of the uh, one of the side advantages I would say as they call it, you know, byproduct. So. But for me, especially speaking, for me, these are the main products. Selling is just a byproduct. 
that's how i looked at looked at uh, networking when i was part used to be part of the network and also networking is also about helping so try to help people as much as you can if somebody is in trouble somebody is going through laws or somebody has some challenge anything which is shared with you and if you think if if not you directly but some of your contacts can help per, help that person to come out of that challenge or struggle i think that will really help you to create your reputation see when we say we want to increase our visibility and we want to outreach to the people as much as we can but it won't be helpful if you are not focused on building the reputation networking is a platform where you can actually build your reputation a great deal it's all about reputation and credibility all right so strategies for effective networking so we'll look at a few of them very very quickly have clear goals that we talked about one of those four goals or you may have your fifth or sixth goal also but be very very clear that okay i'm joining this network and my purpose to join this network is so and so and just stay limited to that maybe you have multiple goals uh, for example i can tell you uh, recently i have joined one uh, uh, one platform called toastmasters international and one of my colleague is uh, right here he's also he has also turned on his video rajendra joshi ji we both have joined more or less similar uh, in, in a similar time frame uh, that's a toastmaster international for uh, pune entrepreneurs so obviously as the name suggests it is a club of entrepreneurs which is my interest and which is joshi ji's interest also but uh, as far as i can speak for myself my primary purpose is to really improve my skills networking will happen over a period of time and you won't believe uh, even before i could uh, give my first speech because toastmaster international is all about giving your speeches or delivering your projects through the speeches even before i delivered my first project i actually got a very good reference and i'm already working on it and i have already recovered my you know initial fees that i have spent uh, on toastmaster international so it's not always about the goals which are materialistic or let's say related to sales or related to revenue sometimes you have a separate goal but at the end of the day if you are able to really showcase who you are and if people start realizing about your reputation about your credibility how you really position yourself everything else really just follows and that's a personal experience or personal anecdote i am sharing with you the second strategy is uh, have some conversation starters ready in previous slide we just talked about that there are some people who are hesitant to start or some people who do not open up their mouth purely because they don't know where to start from uh, just imagine we all have traveled in uh, the train and buses and you know that how the conversation begins we always uh, you know start conversation like uh, for example how is the weather or which part they are from uh and then the conversation takes place and then we end up talking you know the country's politics or even the climate change right that's how the conversation flows but the flow of conversation is not a problem the step 3 and 4 and 5 and onwards is not a problem it's always a problem between from the conversation step 0 to 1 to 3 right so have your conversation starters ready when i used to fly normally in in flight you know people don't talk to each other as much as they do in buses and trains and we all know that but when i used to fly a lot uh, i'll inadvertently i would i would ask a question to my fellow or co passenger who is sitting next to me uh, my my typical question used to be are you going home or uh, going away from home and then he will say no no i am just returning to my home i had a Uh, so and so meeting or i was here for a fun or as a tourist or whatever but that's a very good starter because when you are starting with these kind of questions you are not really necessarily asking for a personal information so in your conversation starters make sure that you are not immediately encroaching into somebody's privacy otherwise that could be a non starter so make sure that you have some good starters handy 
then the next thing is if it is a professional network where you have actually gone with a primary purpose of generating the leads or making new connection make sure that you have a very crisp and very clear introduction and pitch ready with you it should be kind of mugged up raat ko 2 baje bhi jagah neend mein se jagah ke uthaya to then you should be able to tell who you are and try to make that introduction and pitch curious enough because it's going to be very short don't let it be more than 30 seconds or 1 minute at the max okay in this business clubs which i talked about bni and saturday club they actually make you practice your pitch for about 30 seconds and 1 minute so within 1 minute you have to tell about you about your business about your standing your reputation maybe the customers that you serve but try to you know collect those points and uh, i can share those points also there are about 10 pointers based on which you can actually prepare your small 1 minute pitch which you should be able to uh, give uh without any hesitation whenever it is asked for the next thing is gentle questions no probing questions unless and until that person is already in a very strong relationship with you somebody who has already become a friend probably you can ask probing probing questions but be gentle with your questions limit it to uh the questions which are not like i said encroaching the privacy at the same time it is having a smooth transition so the conversation flows like a river it shouldn't uh, like a, you know wave in the ocean it should flow very very smoothly so the transition of conversation is also important because you are the one who is going to ask questions an example of gentle question please yeah sure uh, so let's do one uh, practice Uh, kadambari how much time do you do we have i think i have only one slide after this yes Kadambari. sir you can continue yeah and i hope it is also uh, okay with the other participants uh please you can uh, comment in the chat box Right. so the people are saying yes we can continue sir okay okay so uh, since rajendra ji is the only person i can see who has turned on his video so i'll play this game with him and i know him uh, for last 3 months or so uh, rajendra ji i'll just uh, say few things about me okay maybe in two three sentences you can you can just uh, very carefully listen to what i'm saying and after i end with whatever statement i end you just pick up that last statement and based on that you formulate a question or a statement it doesn't have to be a necessarily a sentence which ends with a question mark so we are not talking about those uh, why what who kind of questions it can be a sentence also but basically you will pick up something from my last statement and only thing that i would request you to make use of one of these three phases the one phrase is it feels like the second is it seems like and the third is it sounds like okay these three okay. phases are clear all right it feels like it sounds like or it seems like you can use any of these three Uh, and we will have this conversation for about next 2 3 minutes okay we'll just be wary of time also once i start and once i end you can just uh, pick up the last question for example i will say uh, rajendra ji i'm i'm from B, i'm from rajkot and i have settled in pune in this great city of pune for about 20 years uh, i have just uh, started my practice as a business coach about 8 years back and once i stop there you can pick up that last st statement and make use of this feels like sounds like and then you can gently ask me a question okay, okay. so let me let me just begin with it okay so many of you probably don't know that uh, uh in my childhood i was uh, of course many of you have been a cricketer but i was a special cricketer uh, i i was i am a former ranji player and uh, i dreamed to be the wasim akram of india 
So Rajendra ji, your turn. So that sounds that you wanted to be a great cricket player. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I wanted to be a cricketer, but then as the fortune would have it, I couldn't really become. There is a long story behind it. Uh, for the paucity of time, I'm not going to share uh, the entire story. But I somehow I couldn't really become a cricketer and I ended up becoming an engineer. So what did really prevented you, if you can tell in one or two sentences? Feels like, no, feels like, sounds like, seems like. You have to use that. Okay. So I ended up so, becoming an engineer. So it sounds that you did not like to become engineer? Not necessarily. I had uh, two career options in my mind. Uh, one of them I could not pursue for, for certain reasons. Uh, but I have no regrets of becoming an engineer. And here I am today. And I think uh, it was a, it was great thing that happened in my life that I turned out to be an engineer. And I'm really proud of it. So it feels that you are enjoying the life of an engineer. Absolutely. I, I enjoyed my engineering career. Uh, as I mentioned in my introduction for about 22 years and everything that I'm doing right now, I think my engineering uh, qualification and the experience as an engineer in life is helping me a lot. So it seems that along with your engineering career, you are still monitoring how the cricket field is developing and how the players are really making their career in this field. Yeah, absolutely. You are absolutely right. I, I, I am still an ardent fan of cricket. I still follow the modern day cricket also. I keep an eye and uh, I really enjoy it. Great. Thank you for yeah. giving this information. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, uh, I'm not sure how impactful or effective it was, uh, but... I started with just you know a couple of statement and uh, we ended up developing the story without any bumps into that right it felt like there was a continuation so always make sure that you make use of these kind of phrases while gently asking a query about the opposite person especially when you are talking to a strange person it helps you to know uh, more if we had continued this exercise for another 5 minutes i think you would have known a lot about me. Even if, I, if, even if I were an introvert person, I would end up sharing and spitting so much of information when there is a gentle query which was asked. All right. And that is something which you can always practice when you are networking with people and striking a conversation or trying to strike a conversation with people who are not so much known to you. I like your three phrases. It feels like, it seems like, it sounds like. Yeah, and you just right. practice this with uh, any stranger today or tomorrow and you will be amazed with the result. Okay, great. Thank you. Everybody can do that. All right. Okay, so next thing is we all want to be very, very interesting or sound very, very interesting to other people, right? We dress up well, we speak well, we try to be as polite as possible, we try to be as courteous and smiling as possible. All of that is, of course, part of your etiquettes and please don't uh, stop doing that. But when you are in the network, instead of you becoming the hero, make somebody else or your counterpart a superstar. Uh, make them feel that they are star, star and they are getting the enough attention. So instead of you becoming interesting, you start taking interest in them. And when you are asking these gentle questions or this transitioning that we have just practiced, uh, uh, you will be able to make them feel that they are the hero of the story. Okay, so it, it's all about them and not about you. You will get your chance, of course. You It's not that, you know, you just listen to someone else's story and you come back home or to office without uh, uh, getting anything. It will happen eventually. But these are some fundamental things that you can do when it comes to networking. Next thing is, Be helpful. Now, every networking meeting, uh, apart from the organizers or the people who are in uh, 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 in the leadership committee, there every network has you know few people who are behind the show. Always offer your help to be uh, to be as helpful as possible, because all these kind of meetings, you know, it requires lot of help, lot of support. 
and a lot of organization goes in the background. And if you are just offering your help, uh, I think you will be you'll be achieving your goal of visibility. You will get noticed very, very quickly. Uh, being helpful is the quickest way to, to demonstrate that you are somebody who is here to help, not only that, but you also start getting attention. Maybe it will also load you with some kind of responsibility because you once you extend a helping hand, it's quite natural that people will also ask for your help the next time and the next time and the next time and maybe more and more help. But that's okay. As long as you can handle it, as long as you feel uh, happy about it, you should be helpful to the people in any which way possible, whether it is meeting organization, for example, uh, let's say there is a standee which is you know kept outside the, the meeting hall or venue. And at the end of the meeting, that has to be packed again and put it back. Or maybe there are some other tools and uh, other equipments which are brought for the purpose of the meeting and you help people. Don't leave it to the people who are part of the organizing committee or the leadership team. You just try to do it on your own, take initiative. And if you are helpful, like I said, it helps you to achieve your visibility goal. Somebody will notice you that, okay, here is a person who is willing to help, who is willing to give, and those who are givers and those who are willing to help are the ones who actually get the better reference. And again, this is something that I'm sharing you out of my experience. The next thing, every conversation should have a call to action. It should not just end like a very casual conversation. Otherwise, like I mentioned in the earlier slide, uh, it's a meeting without any kind of follow up. So there has to be a call to action and then you follow it up with a proper response so that people are keeping you in memory. If you are just ending a meeting without any call to action, there is a 90% chance or more than 90% chance that he is likely to forget you very, very quickly. Um, in this world where everybody is so busy and they are meeting so many people, you will just become one of those too many people and you will not be there in your memory uh, for a longer duration. So make sure that you are not only ending the meeting with a call to action, and that call to action could be an email. It could be uh, a confirmation uh, to meet again, or it could be a small message on WhatsApp saying that, okay, it was a great meeting. It was great meeting with you on so-and-so date. Uh, I really learned a lot from you, or this is something that I have to uh, offer to you. Uh, let's meet again or let's call again. At least make sure that you are in continuous contact with them. That should be one of the things that you should do. <clears throat> Authenticity. If you are committing something to somebody, make sure that you fulfill that. Otherwise, it will hurt your reputation. Remember one thing. Apart from those four objectives, which is making new connection, building relationship, uh, gaining visibility and generating leads, the fifth and hidden objective of any networking, whether you make an attempt or not, uh, it always adds up to your reputation. So if you are helpful, it adds up to your, uh, your, your credibility and reputation. If you are doing otherwise, it also impacts your reputation and credibility. So when you have made any commitment uh, about anything, whether it's just a, as simple as meeting next week, and if you don't honor that commitment, your credibility goes away. If you told somebody that, okay, oh, this is your requirement. I, I know somebody and I'll connect you with them. And if you don't do that, your credibility is at stake. Your authentic, authenticity will be questioned. People will start taking you completely in a negative connotation. So ensure that your authenticity, authenticity is maintained because that's a huge contributor to your reputation and uh, credibility. And finally, follow up. And I think we have discussed enough about it. So I'll just jump to the next slide because of the paucity of time. And this is going to be the last slide. And uh, there are some, again, personally derived uh, uh, golden rules. There are five of them. Attend it regularly. So once you have joined any network, it's all about consistency. If you show up once and then don't attend the next two events or next two meetings, if it is happening on a periodic basis, and if you are not paying attention to that, 
I think you are not doing justice to yourself. Consistency is the key in many cases. Definitely, it is the key in, in networking. So please make sure. And that is also part of your consideration before you join any network. And that's why I said you should not only understand what are their rules and uh, regulations, but you should also check on your commitment part that whether you will be able to make it every week or every fortnight, whatever is the frequency, and you will be able to fulfill those commitments. Because those who are not attending it regularly, we used to say in Saturday Club, jo dikta hai, wo bikta hai. Jo dikta hi nahi, wo bikta nahi hai. In other words, somebody who is like a jugnu, you know, jugnu shows up only in the night or and only in specific season. So if you are showing up only once in a while and then disappear for several other occasions, nobody is going, then your authentic, authenticity uh, will be affected. Your reputation will be affected. People will not be able to generate enough trust on you because you are not disciplined here. Attendance is part of a discipline, definitely an integral aspect of it. So make sure that you are uh, attending the meetings regularly. Um, networking is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So don't expect results almost instantly. It may happen that you may not get results even for six months or even for years. Okay, it may happen. Have trust in that platform because if that platform is generating results for others, obviously the structure and the overall design and the concept of that platform is, is well established, right? That there is nothing wrong with the platform. Maybe in within the same platform, maybe there are issues with some people. That is That could be a possibility. But the platform, every single platform which are tried and tested are producing the results for others. And if it is not producing for you, obviously something needs to change with you, either with your approach, the way you show up, the way you strike conversation with people and a lot of other things. But even if, let's say you think, you know, I'm doing generally okay, uh, uh, you know, I'm showing up, I'm attending regularly, I'm taking part in the activities and a uh, and lot of other things that are required, uh, I'm doing generally well it may still produce results for you a little later. It may not give you the results instantly. So always think long term. This is the most important aspect of any networking. Give before you ask for anything. Before you ask for uh, some referrals for your product or your services, you should be able to actually give it to your fellow members. Because once you give into this mode or you know as they say you give more to get more you will get more only if you start giving so before you give uh, before you ask for getting anything make sure that you are giving enough okay then the next thing is participate so it's not only about attending the meetings regularly also participates in different aspects of the meeting or different requirements of the event. Let's say if there is a social gathering which is happening, do participate. Don't st share, st stay away from it. If there is a uh, informal training which is happening or let's say there is some brainstorming which is happening about the further effectiveness to enhance the effectiveness of the network, participate in those, uh, those discussions, those brainstorming sessions, give your inputs, ask questions, uh, something that you have, if you have noticed and you, if you think that based on your experience and understanding, something needs to change, provide your suggestions. Those are the ways you can participate in the overall success of not only that platform, but also for yourself. And finally, networking is a function of your business. Just like HR is a function and you need to spend time. Let's say if you are a CEO of the company, uh, there are certain things that you need to do. Even if you are a sales head, there are certain aspects that you need to do as part of your profile or your uh, to discharge your responsibilities. Consider networking is not a burden on your business. Many a times, and in my early days of networking, I saw that people are not coming to attend the, the networking meeting. And one of the reasons that they used to cite, and according to them, those reasons were genuine. They thought, no, this is something which is, uh, you know, uh, kind of not so compulsory for my business. I had to give priority to my business and I went to meet that customer or I had these or that. And that's why I did not come to this network. This can happen. Uh, but 
if you have seriously decided to join a network for the benefit of your business out of those four goals or any other goals that you may have <clears throat> consider that networking is an integral part of your business it's just another function like you have a function called sales and marketing networking is also a function of the business and if you take that function seriously any other like any other function in your business i think you will get the serious results at the end of the day all right so that's all i had to share uh, on this presentation thank you very much for everybody uh, by texting your replies whenever i queried you thank you for asking questions if you have any more questions please let me know thank you viman ji for sharing your valuable insights with us i hope our friends in the audience must have learned a thing or two from today's webinar so well it's time for question and answers and i think there are few of the questions in the chat box i'll just read it yeah. so raj marade says can you provide few examples of gentle questions yeah so like i said you know i gave one one of the examples uh, uh when i when i used to travel in flights i used to ask a very gentle a starter question like are you going home or leaving home any question which is not encroaching into anyone's privacy uh, you can consider that as a gentle question many a times with international uh, people or even with people coming from a different geography you ask questions around weather like today kadambari also started uh, sharing some information about the red alert in bombay right because this is a this is a information piece of information or a question which does not hurt anybody but it actually helps you to begin with some con conversation so those are the you know simple questions that you can ask any other question you have yes so he also says as we know networking is most important for business development activity but sometimes we don't know how to start so can you suggest some few steps how to start that activity in initial stage of development okay so uh, if you are joining any let's say business network or it could be any other general network also and especially when let's say it's a, it's a in person network try to figure out or try to spot at least one person whom you think is uh, is a pleasant personality maybe by his uh, by his looks or the way he is exchanging the smiles or the way he is treating others <clears throat> make that person a target to begin with with the conversation and obviously if you spotted it right that person is willing to share information so uh, after your small little introduction saying that okay i'm new to this network and it will help you it will help me if you can uh, explain a few things about this network and also introduce me to some other people okay again this is also a gentle question you are just making a simple very basic request uh, which is not going to hurt anybody right so try to make that request and see how you get the response uh, once you start knowing the people there are certain etiquette that you need to follow of course you know etiquette is something that i did not intentionally cover in this uh, this particular webinar but uh, for example when you are meeting anybody uh, there has to be a firm handshake there should be a smile uh, when you smile with the people or when you are actually shaking hands with people make sure that you are having a proper eye contact because it should not happen that you are shaking hand with somebody and you you are looking at the third person then it dilutes the whole importance and it again you know questions it puts you in, under question mark about authenticity so these are some etiquettes that you can just follow uh, when you don't know about certain things don't be shy to ask about it for example uh, you know let's say there is a breakfast which is kept after the meeting or dinner which is kept outside the meeting generally you will try to follow what others are doing but that's if that is not happening and if that's a question which is puzzling you again find a pleasant personality among the group and uh, make a gentle query that uh, i'm looking for this can you help me or <clears throat> if you don't know about certain rules if you are unclear about uh, the overall flow of the meeting or the structure or what is expected out of you as a member you know you will always have these kind of questions because you are relatively new to the to the group or that network 
obviously there will be unclarity. So try to uh, ask questions about the small little things that you don't know about. And also ensure that you are falling in line in terms of what is expected out of that uh, platform. So these are the few things that you can do as a beginner. Yes. I really like the phrases which you shared that I feel it feels like it seems like it sounds like I'm definitely going to use it next time. So we have another question from Hiba. She says, what about I'm coming from a different culture? Uh, sorry, repeat that. What about I'm coming from a different culture? So how can we start the conversation when there are two people from different cultures? Yeah, uh, generally people think that when you meet with a person who is from a different culture altogether or from a different geography, oh, it's going to be very difficult. But believe you me, based on my experience, I think it is the most easy part because it's not only a problem for you, it's a problem from on the other side also. Okay, so you both are actually sailing in the same boat, I would say separate boat, but in the same direction. All right, so... And that's where you will see one of those characteristics. Uh, you remember when I uh, shared that slide, when I said there are people who are non-starters or people who are hesitant to start. Probably you are also hesitating. You are the one who is actually hesitating. So uh, you be the one who starts the conversation. Uh, if there is a language issue, I'm sure you will still find some common ground to at least converse with people. And it is a problem on either side. So don't worry too much about this small little differences whether it is about culture or whether it is it is about the language or sometimes there is a person who is coming from hardcore mechanical industry and there is another person who comes from it industry they don't understand each other very well and in networking that is the art to find a common ground when we are again just try to recollect the experience of traveling in a bus or train and we all have done that Somewhere we will try to figure out what is common between you and me. People will not interact or share opportunities with each other unless and until they figure out, oh, there is something in him which is like me. There is some common ground. Like I just mentioned uh, Rajendra ji, you know, uh, of course, you know, uh, I was not expecting, I was not aware that he's going to attend this uh, particular webinar, but I made a reference to our common ground, which is Toastmaster. We have a couple of other things also in common, but you try to figure out what is it that is common in all of us. You, uh, Kadambari, you begin the conversation by mentioning about rain and weather because that's the, you know, there is a monsoon in an entire country. It affects and it is very much integral part of everybody's life. So we always, uh, you know, we are kind of tuned and conditioned and experienced enough to strike a conversation on those notes. And that's how you can eliminate and the culture remains behind and the language differences remain far away when you really start striking the code with each other. Yes. We have another question saying, how do we find out who is decision maker using gentle questions without appearing pushy about it? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, uh, when you are in certain degree of intimacy with a person, then only you should open up and uh, ask these kind of questions. Initially, if it is a first meeting, probably you would like to avoid these kind of questions. But when you think that you, you have reached to a certain degree of intimacy where you can probably ask a question without uh, hurting somebody or without encroaching, uh, you can probably start asking questions like, uh, uh, how do you find your customers as an example or uh, and and probably it's more of a question there where you want to satisfy your uh, query about about people's different methods of ask, uh, finding the finding the customers and this is something that i generally do when i meet with somebody and after of course couple of interactions or couple of meetings i generally ask them how do you find your customers now this probably is a question sometimes people feel that oh it's going to put somebody on a block or uh, on, in a corner but if there is a certain degree of intimacy which is already developed they will be able to at least share limited information to you in the same way you can also ask questions about 
how do you make uh, certain decisions in, in your business? Is there a process? Is there uh, somebody who takes a decision on behalf of a group or something like that? So slowly you can drag him into that direction. Uh, these are the questions, we call it as a leading question where you lead the conversation in a particular direction. Your end goal is to figure out who is the decision maker in your organization. So maybe you ask with some other question related to decision making that who takes this kind of decision instead of asking that how the decisions are made in your organization. Is there a process? Are there criteria? Are there some other factors? And then finally, you can move into that direction and find, find out whether there is a real decision maker. It might happen that the person whom you are asking is the decision maker. I hope that uh, answers your question, Raj. Okay, the last question for the session. Any other networking platform for inside sales team apart from LinkedIn or webinar? Yeah, there are a lot of physical networks. Uh, I, I mentioned about few business clubs. Uh, there are some community clubs, there are some management associations, there are some engineering association, there are some sector specific uh, uh, organizations. And good part about all of these, most of these, is that they allow you to come and visit them as a guest. Sometimes you may have to pay a very nominal fee because if they are spending on venue and things like breakfast or dinner, then they probably might ask you to spend about 500 rupees per visit. Uh, and uh, but I think that's a nominal investment. You must do that just to understand and make impression about that group or that particular chapter or a club, uh, how they are functioning, and and make an impression about what what is it that you can get out of them. Well then, thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable insights. Thank you all for tuning in today. Got any feedback for us? Then make sure that you, you are heard by sharing your thoughts in the Google form shared in the chat box. Once again, thank you everyone for attending this webinar. I can't wait to see you all in next webinar. Till then, happy selling. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your participation. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Edge CRM, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you.